how we move into communications. Um, the first thing is the appointment by the county board chair and confirmation by the board of Carl Zarling for supervisory district number four. Carl, could you please stand up and introduce yourself? Everybody. Carl Now is a good chance to get used to using the mic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Carl Zarling, Watertown resident. Um, uh, stepping in for Augie Teets, who is a good old fellow who lived half a block from me, and I'd blow a snow once in a while. So <laughs> here I am. Good to be John. Thank you for accepting. Okay, next, I will swear you in. Mr. Mr. Chair, we should do a confirmation vote, please, in the appointment. We need a confirmation vote. We need a vote. Supervisor Brogler, uh, do I have a second? Supervisor Schultz? Well, let's make another water toast. Supervisor Wenneke has a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of Mr. Zarling uh, taking the District 4 seat, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, welcome Mr. Zarling. Now I'll swear you in. Okay, if you could raise your right hand, please. I state your name. Carl Zarling. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the Office of County Board Supervisor, District 4, to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. I always like to bring people in on busy conversation. <laughs> And then the last communication is just the uh, treasurer's report, which is on this buff uh, color paper. That is it. Very good. Item number eight, special order of business. Supervisor Fitzgerald. Hello, I'm um, happy tonight to be here to introduce to you our new Fort Atkinson City Manager. And I know um, as a group, we do welcome and appreciate working with all the towns and cities and municipalities and the counties. So uh, that was kind of one of the reasons we wanted to bring her tonight, just so you could kind of put a face to a name. And I know Rebecca as well is very interested in working with the, the county as a whole, not just the city of Fort Atkinson. A uh, little tidbit of information, her and Ben actually went to graduate school together, so there's already a little bit of um, working relationship between the two of them. So I think that's really wonderful. We're very lucky, I think, to have her in the county. Um, she is bright, um, experienced, uh, very energetic, enthused to be here. Um, we'll certainly be moving her um, family to Fort Atkinson, so we're very happy to have her here. So. I'll pass over the microphone. I know we have a busy meeting, but I think it's important to just give her a couple minutes anyways just to introduce herself. Um, so if you can welcome Rebecca Lemire, the new Fort Atkinson City Manager. Well, thank you for that great introduction. I don't know what else I can say here. <laughs> uh, so I was hired as the City Manager of the City of Fort Atkinson back in December, and I started in February, so I've been here about 10 weeks. Uh, it's been a great 10 weeks. So far, so far, I'm looking forward to uh, to continuing my tenure here. It feels like it's been a it's a great fit so far. Uh, prior to this position, I was in the village of Darien as the administrator, clerk, treasurer, um, and then prior to that, I was in Beloit for eight years as um, city clerk and a city planner. So I have a lot of experiences in a lot of different uh, areas of local government. So I'm excited to bring all of that to Fort Atkinson. I did want to take this opportunity to thank the county board uh, and the county administrator. For, your, uh, for commissioning that housing study. That was a, a great thing for, uh, for the county in general and the local governments to understand uh, the, the depth of, of the issue, the housing issue here in Jefferson County. So thank you for that. And I also wanted to take a moment to thank you all for the donation-ish of the CDBG closed funds that's really gonna help the city with one of our uh, water utility projects. So I wanted to take a moment to thank you all for that as well. 
So, uh, as Joan mentioned, uh, I'm moving my family here. I have three little ones, and uh, they are seven, five, and almost three. So, we're excited to join the uh, join the community and the school district, and um, and start our start our new adventure here. So. Uh, there's a lot of great things happening in Fort Atkinson. I, I won't uh, go into all of those. I know you have quite a quite a lot to discuss tonight, but um, you can find me uh, my email address on the website or my phone number on the city's website, and I'd be happy to hear from any all of you if you have any issues that I can help. So, thank you for the time tonight. Thank you. Which brings us to public comment. Uh, I have 30 people sign up for a public comment here. We have 30, actually, 20 people sign up for a public comment here. We have a 30 minute period for this. So that essentially gives each person one and a half minutes. So, and I'm going to try to compress these into the two different agenda items here. So there's a one group that's here for the LNG, and one person here, and one group here for the rezoning. So I'll start with the rezoning first here. Um, John Merrick. Please, and we want everybody to come up to the microphone. Please state your name and address for the record. Can everybody hear me? Good evening. My name is John Merrick. Um, my family back there, Michelle, my son, Mitchell, my daughter, Michaela, her fiance, Eugene, are here. Uh, we own Palmyra Storage in the village of Palmyra. We started uptown. Um, we completely filled up that parcel. We moved out to Highway H about a year and a half ago. What we did is um, uptown, our, our doors are burgundy, they're very loud. When we moved out to the out into the country, we thought by toning it down, we'd have you know uh, earth tone colors so on and so forth to try to blend in with the neighborhood. We've been putting up storage units uh, in the last year and a half. Um, since then, uh, we've applied for, uh, we're working on the north end, we're going into the mill right now. We are uh, doing the uh, uh, climate controlled, and we'd like to do the, the venue area in the center, working our way to the south. The, the venue area is going to be in the old industrial buildings. Um, the name of it is going to be called uh, Forever Young, um, because of the Young Foundation, this was his factory uh, that he was building in. Uh, what we're all here about is going to the south is the three lots. Um, it's a wooded area. First of all, everybody that you know named us on Facebook and everything like that, this is industrial land. It's not agricultural. So the fact that three houses can't go there doesn't mean nothing's going to happen. A building could go up 10 feet off the lot line. Time. <laughs> Eugene Sweeto. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Eugene Sweeno, uh, 517 West Wilson Street in the town of Palmyra. Uh, the reason I'm speaking tonight is I wanted to speak in support of John and Michelle Maring. The amount of good that they have done for our community is absolutely remarkable. You know, what they have done over the years is they have taken many eyesores in our community and turned them into beautiful new properties with new life and new purpose. To name a few, the house that next to the church that I grew up in in St. Matthew Lutheran Church Main Street had been falling apart and had been an eyesore in our community. Recently, a couple years ago, they fixed that up, repurposed it. Beautiful new home with a young family. Uh, there's another building on the corner of 59 that had been falling apart, had a roof caved in. They recently put a roof on that, be fixing that up. Highway 59 is a major uh, building in our town that everybody goes past when they go through our town. Uh, the Masonic Lodge in town had, you know, they had repurposed that, built beautiful new apartments in that building that, quite frankly, you can't find in, our in Palmyra. So the beautiful new apartments there, the bowling alley on the corner of town, you know, had been fixed up, reopened, that had been closed for years. And most recently they want to build a house for their son to keep another generation of marriages in town to do more good for the community, for the community. Um, other than that, I would like to say that I think we're very lucky that the Marians called Myra their home. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Steve Hill. Steve Hill. Can you keep that 
you know, um, it's really been critical to preserving the oak forest and uh, expand on habitat. And on a day when there's like a wind out of the south, that could really limit their ability to use those burn the burns. I'm Winona Bradsett. I live at N2437 Bradsett Lane in the town of, uh, it's a Jefferson address, but in the town of Palmyra. I'm Supervisor 1 on the Town of Palmyra Board of Supervisors, and I am speaking on behalf of the town tonight. The first thing I would like to correct is that be sure that you're not confused about the difference between the town and the village. And one of the prior speakers referred to building in the town and, you know, improving things in the town. I think he was actually referring to the village. That's not the town. We're two separate entities. The, the rezone we're talking about tonight is in the town of Palmyra. Um, and I think you've heard from a lot of citizens, you've, you've had emails and you've had letters from them. You got a letter from me trying to lay this out and I want to point out that the, from the, from the get-go, this whole proposal has kind of fallen through the cracks. It's really in opposition to our recently adopted land use and, and the, our land use plan and goals. And in the past, and even now, I, I'm, as a Jefferson County resident, I'm always proud and appreciative of the commitment that you as a board have made in creating and crafting and adopting the Comprehensive Plan and Agricultural Preservation and Land Use Plan. And your efforts have created a framework for orderly and sensible development while assuring that our most valuable natural resources, our farmland, <laughs> Hi, I'm Doris Mackey. I live at North 933 Canuton Drive, Whitewater. I am an opposed to the rezoning of the Marin residence. This property is an old site of Young Engineering Snow Company, Snow Valley plant built in 1950. This industrial site helped build Urban Young build his legacy in our community. He set up a foundation in his name early in a career. The site was listed in the Wisconsin Architect and History Inventory. His foundation on many acres in the town of Palmyra in sections 32, 33, 34 for 1970 town of Palmyra plat map, much of which is preserved as natural areas. In the last years of his life, he devoted much of his time in creating a center of meditation for people of all faiths just outside Palmyra. The proposal of A3 Agricultural Rural Residential District is to allow limited rural Residential development on lands predominantly agricultural areas that are not suited for agricultural production or due to the location would have limited impact on agricultural production. This property is not in a predominantly agricultural area. When you observe the area from Bald Bluff Scenic Overlook to the west, there are three farm fields and there's also one else. The property around this is predominantly natural resources. The Kettle Marine State Forest South Unit, state natural areas, Natural Conservancy's bike trails, National Ice Age Trail, horse trails are all in the approximate area. Ball Bluff is adjacent to the south side of this property, once owned by the Urban L. Young Foundation. Andrew Whitney. Jefferson County chapter. Uh, I am also the hike leader of Wednesday's weekly hike. Um, and the Ball Bluff is one of the most popular destinations to hike. Uh, Ball Bluff is a major attraction for tourism, for tourists uh, visiting our area. It is a uh, 
even mention in popular books about Wisconsin, I'd like to read a paragraph. Unusual land formations likely come with the territory around glacier formed areas called kettles, kettle moraines, in southern Wisconsin around called um, kettles. Uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> Ultimate with ridges and moraines of former landscape unique to this area. The kennels were considered sacred spaces by the woodland tribes that inhabited the territory before the settlers came. In one of the part time. Bonnie Robinson. My name is Bonnie Robinson. I'm a resident of the town of Palmyra. My dad was born and raised in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. When I was a child, we would go to Elkhorn to visit my grandmother. My dad would always take us, my two brothers and two sisters, on a hike in the Kettle Moraine National Forest. He was a biology teacher as well as a physical education teacher and coach. He taught us how to identify flowers, trees, birds, and appreciate nature. My family moved here in 1994. It had been quite a while since I had hiked in this area. I was absolutely amazed at all the wonderful, beautiful, well-maintained trails here in the southern Kettle Moraine. I joined the Walworth Jefferson County Ice Age chapter and I hike with the two local hiking groups that hike twice a week. And I'm learning even more. My husband and I adopted a section of the Ice Age Trail from Bluff Road to Tamarack, which includes Bald Bluff and Stone Elephant. I can't tell you the number of volunteers we have put in to maintain this beautiful section of trail and to educate others. And the historical background is so interesting. I hike with my grandchildren, my sisters and brothers and their families, my friends. I've guided hikes for grade school class trips. I hope to continue to educate everyone to have a love for nature and area history. Of course, we love stopping by at the local restaurants and ice cream shops in the area after our hikes. I love the drive on County Highway H from Highway 12 north to Palmyra. Such a beautiful forest with an absolutely great ice age terrain. So many hills, kettles, oaks, oak forests, pine trees, so many native plants. But recently that has changed dramatically just north of Bald Bluff. Time. David Nominson. David Nominson, brother. Thank you, David Nominson, also a member of residents of the town of Palmyra. Um, this isn't just state forest. Uh, this is a state natural area. So as I hope most of you know, state natural areas protect outstanding examples of Wisconsin native landscape, of natural communities, significant geological formations, and, arche and archaeological sites. In other words, it's entitled to a higher level of legal protection. Now, what difference does it make? It's zoned industrial right now. They want to have it rezoned to A3 for essentially residential purposes. If you are fortunate enough to live right next to a state forest, it becomes part of your backyard. Wonderful. Uh, if it's industrial, then you go to the place of business, you work there, you check out at 5 o'clock, you go home. Uh, or you take care of business and you go home. Uh, not if you live there. It becomes part of your backyard. Why is this important? Well, uh, I'll give you a quick example. When I was a volunteer, uh, I used to take shortcuts uh, back there. Why? Because I knew somebody who was fortunate enough to, to be right next to it. So I could get to my job site quickly. Next spring, what happens? Where is all this garlic mustard coming from? And I realized at that point in time, I was part of the problem. I was out there tromping around in the forest, and I was spreading probably one of the pernicious invasive species that there is. So leave it industrial. Um, time. Thank you. Um, I'm 
Penmanship's tough, so I might butcher this name. Is it Peter Diemerkop? I've heard worse. My name is Pete Durkop. I'm a Jefferson County resident, uh, 4166 Westwater Street in Sullivan. <clears throat> Commend the Marings on some of their previous activities, as the other person mentioned, as far as beautifying the, the surrounding area. Uh, however, uh, this is this rezoning effort is totally against the the zoning the zoning plan and the farm use preservation plan. The environmental corridor overlay is not a frivolous designation. It's something that has taken a lot of thought by specialists, experts, county staff have put a lot of time into this plan, and it's not a designation that's been made lightly. That designation exists. It's an overlay, regardless of whether it's AI or anything else. That designation doesn't go away with the change of a letter. So, <clears throat> you know, this, this parcel has this, this overlay regardless of what the zoning is. You know, and this is not just any environmental corridor within Jefferson County. It is adjacent to a very important landmark, the landmark of Ball Bluff, something that has had importance in this area since First Peoples pre-European settlement. The surrounding area is used by area-sensitive uh, forest interior birds, things that would be negatively impacted by holes in the canopy created from housing. And frankly, buyer beware. This is not a new overlay. The environmental corridor was there when the property was purchased. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, regardless of how it's owned. And I have Beth Kutka. I live at W374 South 8210 County Road N in Eagle. I have no prepared remarks and I am very nervous. Um, I know the Marings because I had both of their children in my fourth grade, grade classroom and they were always extremely lovely to me. Hi. Um, but I am here to speak on behalf of the birds. Okay, I am a bird lover and interior birds are species such as a wide variety of warblers, tanagers, phoebes, peewees, uh, thrushes, wood, wood thrushes, hermit thrushes, swings and thrushes, all kinds of birds. And they need unbroken, as much as possible, um, forest, interior forest, which was mentioned before. So I just want to see habitats left intact. Thank you, Beth. And you did just fine. If you can stand up in front of fourth graders, you can stand up in front of this. <laughs> That's all I have at this point for the uh, rezoning. We'll go to uh, the LNG issue now. Uh, we'll start with uh, Carl Yeager. Good evening. My name is Carl Yeager. I'm a lifelong resident of Atomic Zonia, born and raised here and raised my family in Zonia. I've served my community as town supervisor for over 28 years and served on the town of Zonia Fire as a fireman and EMT. I also currently serve Jefferson County as a civil service commissioner for Sheriff Milbrock. My roots are very deep in this community. The proposed Muir G's LNG facility will be southeast of my home on Triangle Road. I will see the facility every time I drive to Exonia. Will it bother me? No, it will not. I'm here tonight to support the joint developers agreement before you. The Exonia Town Board unanimously approved the JDA as presented at our April meeting. We had discussions and allowed the public to speak about the agreement. The minutes of the town board meeting reflect the comments made by a few of the residents living close to the proposed facility. 
Supervisor Renard was present at the meeting. She pointed out a few items she had added to the agreement that were a substance. But now Supervisor Renard is playing the game of wanting to add more items to this JDA. The facility, this facility is being constructed in the town of Exonia, and yet Supervisor Renard does not speak to the town board about her issues or additional concerns. We Energies has addressed every issue the town board has brought to them. They have brought materials, answered questions, and willing, willingly worked with us. Supervisor Renard is not representing the majority of residents in the town of Exonia. Time. Try it again. There we go. <laughs> Mike Higgins, uh, 1408 Meadowbrook Drive, Watertown, Wisconsin. I've uh, been a resident around in Phoenix, Ohio, even uh, for, for all of my life. I uh, just want to take a, a quick minute uh, to say I am in support of this JDA as proposed. Uh, and I also want to say thank you to E Energies for proposing this project and bringing it forward. The men and women that will be uh, fed off of this project is, is amazing and a great opportunity for our community. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Janine Gribino and I live at N9235 Green Valley Road. I am a member of the Griebenau family, and we are the owners of the land being considered for the We Energies LNG project. Thank you to the Jefferson County Board for allowing me to speak tonight. The Griebenau family would like to thank everyone involved in drafting the Joint Developers Agreement. The document is very thorough and well written. This document was not rushed. In fact, the JDA was on the agenda for five Jefferson County Executive Committee meetings with public comment about it every meeting. The public also had ample opportunity to comment on the JDA at the town of Exonia level before it even reached the county. I looked back at our conditional use permit, which was approved by the Jefferson County Planning and Zoning Committee on 11-11. There are several items that are instructed to be in the JDA. They are all there. Sureties are on pages 9 through 11. Highway access is on pages 8 and 9. Lighting is on page 13. The CUP also states that no additional requirements are needed in the JDA for the following items. Landscaping, architectural design, type of construction, construction commencement and completion dates, fencing, screening other than the six foot evergreen and shade trees as proposed. Time. Thank you. Joel Green up. <coughs> Jennifer? 
Kuiper's zero. My name is Jennifer Zier with We Energies. I'm before you this evening regarding the joint development agreement for the LNG gas facility we are proposing to build in Exonia. <coughs> this storage facility is a critical part of our efforts to make sure that our customers, including residents of Jefferson County, have heat in their homes on the coldest days of the year. As a regulated utility, it is our obligation to make sure that Wisconsin does not experience the same dangerous conditions that Texas did this past February. As you know, the disruptions to the natural gas delivery system resulted in extensive damage and left residents freezing in their homes because they did not have access to natural gas heat in frigid temperatures. This facility is exactly the type of infrastructure we need to ensure reliability during very difficult operating conditions. In September, through discussions with the town of Exonia, a draft JDA was developed and posted on the town's website. In November, the JDA was introduced to the county and sent to the executive committee. We have attended executive committee meetings in November, December, January, February, and March. Public comments have been taken at every meeting along the way. During the first three months of this year, we worked diligently with the executive committee, supervisors, and staff to make changes to the agreement consistent with those discussions. On March 31st, the executive committee voted four to one to recommend approval of this JDA. On April 12th, the town of Exonia approved the revised GDA. The town, county, and We Energies came to the table in good faith over several months. Time. Please vote for it. I have Joe Zilke on Zoom. Joe Zilke on Zoom. Mr. Zelke, please unmute yourself. Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right, how's that? We can hear you. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Joel Zelke, and I represent the 2,700 steam fitters living and working in southeast Wisconsin, and specifically the 120 of our members that, that live in Jefferson County. Um, I want to voice my support for the We Energy's liquefied natural gas storage facility uh, proposed for Antonia. Uh, the truth is that this project is, is going to help stabilize the supply of natural gas in our part of the state, which has a growing need for this fuel source. Uh, we need to meet the demand to keep our homes and businesses warm, powered, and safe. Uh, there's already over 100 of these plants operating in the U.S. And in fact, there's been one in operation in Oak Creek for over 50 years that was uh, built and is maintained by our steam fitters who have extensive training on building these types of facilities. Um, customers are going to save money by We Energy being able to buy the, the natural gas in off-peak months to be used later in the winter. Plus, Jefferson County and Exonia are going to be getting an additional source of revenue. So please give your approval to this project. Thank you for your time. Um, we have Victor Carolinas. Victor Carolinas. Good evening. My name is Victor Carolinas, and I live at West 262 Hillendale Drive in the town of Exonia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm asking you not to approve the JDA tonight. I do not feel that the JDA adequately protects the citizens of Exonia and Jefferson County in the event of a gas leak, systems failure, or most of all, a catastrophic emergency situation. The JDA on page 14, number 8, indicates that the utility shall prepare and submit a plan dealing, uh, detailing potentially potential emergencies prior to the start of construction where the fire and EMS responses would be required. My question and concern is why wait? It's our safety. We Energies has thought, has been through this on previous occasions. They must have some idea what a plan would look like. 
Why can't we see it? So again, I ask that you vote no on the JDA tonight. And we thank you for your time and commitment on this matter. Diane Pisano. My name is Diane Pasno. I would like to urge the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors to not approve the Joint Developers Agreement tonight until such time as the document addresses some significant inadequacies regarding safety and emergency plans, specifically Section 8 of the agreement. The current document states that an emergency plan will be developed but only speaks in very general terms about the development of this plan. The only language that specifically speaks to citizen safety says the plan will include notification methods to neighbors. It fails to address evacuation plans or assembly areas for citizens, nor how to protect the young children who attend school at Exonia Elementary School. How will this plan address the cognitively disabled residents of the two CBRFs located within a half mile of this LNG plant? In my letter to all supervisors, I provided a ridiculously basic emergency plan that would meet the language of the JDA, but fails terribly to meet the ad to meet fails to adequately protect the citizens of Exonia. We all would like to believe that we energies will do what is in the best interest of everyone and everyone's safety, but not all large corporations can be trusted to do so without sufficient legal requirements as we have all experienced recently with the Enbridge pipeline leak. I ask you to take the action that will properly protect the safety of our families, our school, our properties, and our well-being. I urge you to consider modifying portions of the JDA so as to address specific safety and emergency plan language before voting to approve this JDA. Please give the citizens of Exonia greater peace of mind regarding how to protect our families. Thank you. We have Tiffany Carey uh, on Zoom. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, so I just want to like paint the picture of this. So this is going to be a hundred and fifty foot tall, a hundred and fifty foot wide building that's going to tower over many houses in Exonia. And I'm not here to specifically say, don't pass this JDA ever. All I want for you to do is to help protect neighboring landowners. So there's a few things. People are talking about safety, and we want that. And also, some, some people who live near this property are asking to be included in the $5,000 um, amount of money that is being given to neighbors. So that was uh, there was basically a... A clause put into the agreement to give five thousand dollars to neighbors to put in um, buffers so that we don't have to look at this thing out of our window because this is going to be towering over our property and no amount of screening on the property line is going to protect our property values mm -hmm. so the very least that we can have is just a few trees that can protect us so that we don't have to look at it out of every window so um, Basically, the current JDA has houses on, on two sides of the property, but is missing some of the other houses that are just as close as those houses. At the April 12th meeting in Exonia, we energies agreed to add one house on Gopher Hill because that man was there and specifically asked for that, but it wasn't even put into the current version of the JDA. My house property line shares a property line with this, and they specifically excluded that property line, which doesn't make any sense. That house that was added is further away from mine. Time. There is eight houses in a block. So Time. we're just adding. adding things. Thank you. Yeah. That, ends, that ends our public comment period. <coughs> and that moves us on to item number 10, annual reports. For our district attorney. <laughs> Hello everyone, in an effort to keep everything moving, I will also try to keep things short. Um, I'm your newly elected district attorney, I took office uh, in July when I was appointed by the governor, but now officially in January. 
Um, Susan Happ is now the Attorney General's office, if you're wondering what happened to her. Um, perhaps the biggest change to our office, in addition to COVID and all of the crazy things that that brought our way, is that we did add a district attorney or assistant district attorney to our staff. Um, Garrett Johnson joined us uh, after I became the district attorney. Um, Michael Witt, who formerly was a defense attorney in town, also now has joined our staff. Um, budgetary, from the county perspective, impact is minimal. Um, because the addition of a district or assistant district attorney is actually a state employee. Um, we did a lot of business this year. Law enforcement seemed to have, on average, made more arrests, more referrals. Um, they felt it, as did we. But um, looking at the numbers, it looks like we've been resolving cases even faster than we have in the past, perhaps due to better access to Zoom. I don't know. There's a little bit of a background, a back log of cases due to jury trials not really going during the course of the last year, but that plug is starting to move through the system as we have resumed jury trials and the judges have had them set almost continuously. Mm -hmm. At least it seems that way. Um, so